The JavaScript ecosystem is huge and rich, right? So there's a high chance that you're going to run into a library or package that's not typed. So what do you do in that case? The great thing about TypeScript is that the community can gather around to create types for libraries that don't use TypeScript. So this is possible thanks to ambient declarations that describe the types that would have been there if the project was written in TypeScript. Those are usually files ending with the DTS file extensions, but it's really not something you have to download and place in the project. You can just install this with npm or whatever and is going to go into your node modules, right? And TypeScript is going to be like, oh, look, here is a definition file. I'm going to pick it up. So one of the projects behind this is definitely type that has a ton of those things that everyone can contribute to. And you can go to the official TypeScript page and you can do a search for a package and you're going to know if you need types for it, if it has installation instructions. For example, if we look at node, we can see there's an instruction for installing node, but there's also an instruction for installing types node. So in this example, I have a simple HTTP server in node that sends a JSON response and it can be simpler, but you're going to learn how to use this, right? Because you're really going to notice when you don't have TypeScript in your project because you're probably used by now by the awesome auto completion, type safety, etc. And the difference is really day and night, right? So let's start by creating an app.ts file. And let's just create the server. So we can say cons HTTP. Again, we're using require, right? So it's not even modern ES modules. We're going to look into the error in a second, but let's create the request listener. It takes a request and response, right? And then we can say response right head 200. We can say content type application JSON. And then let's just create a response json stringify let's give it a pokemon it's going to be pikachu and then if you're familiar with express this is really similar but this is just using node and express is built on node right it's like http create server and you can see oh we don't have auto completion or anything we're just running blind <laughs> right and then we can say server listen on port 8080. So at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, all right, so how do I get this auto completion? And first we hover over require and we get a useful message. Cannot find name required. Do you need to install type definitions for node? Try npm i, save as development dependencies, type node. And you can say, don't mind if I do. And if you go to our terminal, let me just close this and I can type npm id, we just complete it, types node. And this is the first step. And let me just close the terminal because we don't need it anymore. So What's the next step? So if we hover over require call, maybe convert it to an import. So sometimes you're going to have these packages that are written using common JS instead of the ES modules because they're older packages and not every code base is going to change overnight for the latest and hottest trends, right? So if I look at this example here, how we solved it, Sometimes you have to do this import and this is really trial by error, right? Or you can look it up online and figure it out that way. So how you can do this, we can import it using this syntax. So star import all as HTTP from HTTP. And that's going to work. And there really isn't any secret knowledge to this. You just have to try it out and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So now we've done that part, but now we really want this awesome auto completion for the request and response object or whatever, right? Because they're like, hmm, how do I find these types out? And your first thing might be going to Google and looking at Stack Overflow, etc. But let's just pause for a second and go spelunking inside the type definitions, which might sound intimidating, but really don't be afraid. Just explore and learn from the types, right? So another thing I want to note that I really didn't make up this example because of course I looked at the node documentation and the node documentation told me, hey, use this function that's named request listener in their example, right? So maybe we can look for this function inside the type definitions to figure out the types for request and response, right? Because if we just type request or response, we might not find anything. So let's go spelunking in a type definition. Like how do we do that? We already did this in the past. So here is the HTTP package. And if we right click it, we can say, go to definition. And here are all the types for this. So you can see here's the ambient type declaration, HTTP DTS. And if we just type request or something, there's a lot of results, right? So maybe we can narrow it down. If we go here, we can copy over request listener and it should be the first result. But yeah, this is how we can find types that aren't really well documented or we might not know how to figure it out, right? So we can say this is our type order function and it has a request that's an incoming message and a response that's a server response. All right, so this is awesome. So let's go to the request, change it to incoming message. You can say incoming message, even if we don't use it. And yeah, it even does this, which is awesome. 
but we can just do this and let me just what was it right server response yeah server response wants us to but we can also probably in so we can do import type so this is another one we can use type from http you can incoming message because right this is a common js so we can also do server response and this is how you can do it also sometimes so we really don't need http dot and just remove this and everything should work just fine so this really isn't anything special you can just use the type keyword to specify that this is a type so your code is more readable right but you can also import it normally inside your other imports so now if i go here let me just comment this out so we can see if this works as expected and if i go here we should get awesome auto completion so you can say right head and you can see wow we have the documentation inside the editor so this is really how we can take advantage of these things yeah let me just remove this and i'm going to uncomment this so now we have the entire http api at our fingertips we can look at without leaving our editor and how awesome is this even if we don't use the request response so using types is easy in most cases when it's properly documented in a project that uses typescript but i wanted to show you how we can deal with a scenario where that isn't the case and also how do you deal with some packages that you really don't know the types or don't want to deal with that's really simple too so in the rare case when there's no types for a package you can create a index dts file and place it inside some whatever folder that's types for example so you can create let's just create a types folder we can create our own ambient type definitions file and to get rid of any warnings you can just say declare module http and it's going to get rid of any warnings you might have it just says hey typescript this thing exists, so don't worry about it. All right, so that's it, how you deal with untyped libraries. So catch you in the next one.